we'll praise Jesus. But we need to make sure that whatever job we're working, whatever place and time we're in, whatever the weather is, that we give God glory. We have to remember Job that even though God allowed Satan to kill his family, to kill all his animals, and to bring misery into his life, Job still praised the Lord. And because of that, God added to his blessing and he brought Job back from his despair. If we learn to praise God in the good times and the bad times, we will be much more likely to endure to the very end. This world complains about the weather. They say California is in drought and um, God doesn't bring any rain. And then they're upset that the earth is scorched with heat. But then God allows rain to come in snow and people are upset that God brings snow. But we don't want to be the ones that are just complaining against God like the children of Israel that were in the wilderness for 40 years. Wherever we are, we want to be the ones that give God glory. Today, however, I wanted to speak a little bit about <clears throat> jobs or careers that are um, acceptable for a Christian. <clears throat> because there are some jobs that are better than others. And all I can do is share my limited experience with the jobs I have had. But um, basically, you want to find a job that allows you to um, follow Jesus Christ without compromise. A lot of jobs, you have to basically, in one way or another, sell your soul to make money. So you have to lie, cheat, steal. You have to push others down, belittle others. You have to do things that are um, against your own morality in order to keep your job or please your boss. And I've run into these sorts of situations in the workplace, and it's very uncomfortable as a Christian, especially a Christian that doesn't want to compromise in our, um, <clears throat> in our faith with the Lord. So, um, I want to just speak about a few jobs I have. If you've listened to my channel before, you know that when I was younger, right out of high school, I became um, a, a pastor at a Baptist church. So, I was paid as an intern when I first started. And for years, that was a great job for me. I thought, um, basically, this is easy money. The, the people bless me very well. <clears throat> and um, at the time, I didn't much compromise because I was um, in in the same uh, parallel as the world. So uh, for me to go out to movies or to go to shows, uh, rock shows, or listen to ungodly music or anything with kids in the youth group or with the families there, it wasn't any problem. I didn't find any compromise until I got serious about Jesus. When I got serious about following Jesus, all of a sudden, um, living in the church and getting paid by the church became a huge compromise for me. I felt so convicted about this because I just knew that I could only, um, I could only continue to get paid uh, for this career as being a professional pastor as long as I said what was right within my Baptist denomination. If I came out saying you could lose your salvation if you sin, then I would lose my paycheck. So I realized very quickly I was strapped to, um, to my job. B basically, they had shackles on me and a muzzle on my mouth. And if I stood up and, and spoke what was right, I would no longer get paid. So I would never advise anybody who wants to be a, a Christian to ever go into Christian ministry, go to a Christian college, um, or, you know, um, try to be paid to be a professional miss missionary or pastor or something like that. Because if you do come to grips with God and want to get right with him, then you will be um, so oppressed by that organization, it'll make you want to cry because you'll know that you are a slave to that organization. Now, of course, if you're stuck in the world and um, you don't want to be a Christian anyways, then it doesn't matter what kind of compromising um, job you have. And if you're a worldly Christian, it doesn't matter to be a paid pastor or not because um, you don't have the morality that comes from our Father in heaven. There were compromising situations that came in church. Um, during the time that I was there was um, the, 
the very beginning of um, homosexuals starting to show their face in church and um, the other pastors in, in the church had to make a decision what they would do um, because of course as a Baptist organization we were against homosexuality, gay marriage, but as these things started to transpire, um, the church realized there's no way we're going to just kick all of the homosexuals out and all of the gay people out. So we have to figure out how to address this in a appropriate uh, manner. So basically, it just limited their freedom of speech because they're paid professionals. We as disciples of Jesus don't want to ever be paid professionals. That is too professional for the kingdom of God where we can't stand up for what is right because we're scared we're going to lose money. And no matter what job you're in, whatever job you want to receive in this world, just pray and say, Lord Jesus, I pray that you give me my daily bread, but that I never will compromise to be pleasing men over God. I don't want to love father or mother more than you or my boss more than you or my children or my own life. I want to lay down my life as a sacrifice for my God and I want to serve you first and never compromise in what I know is true for anything with you, my Father. And if we are serious to lay down our life for him and cast our crowns, that is our abilities, our skills, um, our talents before our Father in heaven, then he will give us the kind of job where we can make money but not be serving mammon or, um, you know, serving um, immoral money unjust money. So I, as part of my testimony, I left the Baptist church that I was a paid pastor at um, for many more reasons than just the money um, situation. Uh, it was causing me personally also to fall into sin due to lust and all of that stuff. And um, I realized it, I needed a job where I'm not compromising. The first job that I got, guys, when I left the Baptist church um, because I never really did anything except ministry and work with junior high and high school students. My first job that I landed was working at a boys and girls club. So I became a site manager at a boys and girls club. And um, at first it was great. I was able to paint the walls of the of that boys and girls club and I, I went to the campus that was nearby and I invited high school students to come and I was able to start building up the, um, the organization. But what I found out was um, the boys and girls club, this organization got funded mostly by the state. They have private um, uh, parties that donate to them as well. But because the state donates a lot of the money and they also operate as um, a charity or a nonprofit, um, they have to please the people that give them money. And the government wanted to push all of these programs. One of them was um, the program that had to do with abortions for young girls. And there were leaders in the Boys and Girls Club that came in and basically said that we, as site managers, so me, if a, if a, if a teenage girl came to me and wanted an abortion, I had to point her to an abortion clinic as part of my job as a site manager. And as a Christian, I would in no way do that. So because I wouldn't do that, I'm standing against, um, I'm, I'm standing against the body of, of governing um, authorities that are over my head. Um, there was many other things besides that abortion um, issue, um, like they were teaching um, high school students um, not about celibacy and about abstaining from sexual activity, but they would just uh, pass out. They were the sorts of people that would just pass out condoms and stuff like that. So none of that stuff, my heart uh, would bear witness that I could do as a Christian. Now, um, I could witness to people about the Lord there. All of that was good. I was able to bring Jesus um, to those students, and all of that was good and wonderful. But at the end of the day, um, they were asking me to do things that were a compromise to my faith. And it got to the point where the Lord knew my heart for him was not to be there, and I put in my resignation. And I didn't know where I was going to go. Um, at that period of time in my life, but I knew I wanted to work a job 
that I could just please the Lord and not compromise. So I asked the Lord where to go and he showed me exactly where to go. I ended up working for a business that is known as uh, Delaware North. It's a really big company that is in a lot of the national parks of um, probably the world, but for sure the United States. They're in the Grand Canyon, I believe. Um, they, they're in a lot of the national parks of, um, of the U S so they operate, um, all the things that a vendor would do, uh, all the concessions. So they own all the hotels, um, or they lease them, um, any, uh, restaurants or things like that. And so the Lord had me work for these people that is Delaware North at the time, but there's other big companies like that. And it was an, it was an absolutely wonderful job. I didn't have to compromise. I could live my faith however I wanted. Um, I could, I could speak about Jesus and all they cared about is if I had my license to drive a truck and if I could, um, take out the trash, I, um, I started working for the hotel in the hospitality business and I had a, a truck that I could deliver linen to the hotel. I could, uh, you know, take out the trash and, um, I would work with guests occasionally giving them, <clears throat> you know, uh, new linen and things to their hotel room. I did that for about two years, and um, during that time, I had very little expenses. I had my cell phone bill, and that was pretty much about the extent of my bills. But during that time, guys, I was trying to pay off all my uh, student loans to my school. I was trying to uh, pay off all my debt to the different vehicles I had bought, um, my mortgage on my house. And the Lord made the way for me within about two years, actually a year and eight months, um, with that job that I had to Delaware North to pay off um, about $150,000 of debt. And the way that happened was when I was working for Delaware North, I had um, very, very minimal expenses. So all the money I was making went straight to paying off my debt. My house sold during that time. Um, my possessions that I didn't need, I just sold. And my goal was to get out of debt because I knew serving God was not about getting into a big career with more debt and going to school to get into more debt because that brings more slavery to this world. But I wanted to be able to serve God freely that if he said, pack your bags and move to a different country or wherever he had me go, that I'd be ready to go without saying, Lord, I can't, I'm, um, I'm in bondage here to my debtors. I never wanted to say that to the Lord. So the Lord made the way for me within a year and eight months to pay off all my debt. And, um, that was truly a blessing. Um, you know, as far as a job that you work, if you surrender that to the Lord and say, Lord, I pray that, um, I can work some job that, uh, that you allow me to pay off my debt. I want to be out of debt. I want to be able to pay my bills. I don't want to be um, poor or homeless. The Lord will make the way for you. And um, this job for me at the time was exactly what I needed. I, I wasn't making a lot of money with that job. At that time, I think it was like nine or $10 an hour, which seems like nothing now. But um, I was only paying, I think, $21 a week for my apartment or my the little uh, house I was living in, the little cabin, $21 a week. And then I was on a food plan through the same uh, that same business that was $45 a week. So virtually nothing. And when your expenses are that low, every bit of money that you make, you can just put right into savings or right into paying off your debt. And that's what I did. And the Lord blessed me with being able to get out of debt and um, <clears throat> then the Lord had me move on from that place. And I didn't know what job to work because I went to college to be a, a professional minister, you know, to be in the ministry. I wanted to be a professional pastor. So I didn't really know, um, I didn't really know any other job. But I thought I could work with my hands. My dad was a carpenter. Um, I've learned to do construction kind of work. 
I guess I could do maintenance for the hotel. So as time went on, I applied for a certain maintenance job. And I ended up um, getting a job as a maintenance and construction type of worker at a few different hotels that I oversaw. And I did that on and off um, for about six or seven years. That job taught me a lot. And it also was a blessing because again, I didn't have to compromise in my faith for my job. You know, you can believe whatever you want as long as you know how to plunge the toilet, take out the trash, do sheetrock, paint the ceilings. Um, if you know how to sweep the parking lot, um, pressure wash the sidewalks. No one cares if you're atheist or you believe in God. They don't care if you're a Jew or a Gentile. As long as you can do your work, then um, you get your paycheck every one or two weeks. So... <clears throat> During that time, I was encouraged by my mom, who was alive during that time, to, um, to pursue teaching that is in the public school. So I um, went and I took the CBEST test because I already have my undergraduate's degree. And I was able to substitute teach with an emergency um, credential. So... Um, during this time that I was working maintenance and construction type of work, I started taking two or three days a week to substitute teach. And um, as it ends up, I got a call from the, one of the schools that I was um, teaching um, eighth grade at. And they asked if I could teach there full time and to take on a special class of eighth graders. <clears throat> this class was um, prone to failing and some of the students were just in danger of not graduating and making it to high school. So it was a special opportunity for these kids to be able to learn and for me to be able to teach them just the basics, math, history, science, language, and of course physical education. So it ended up being this really unique experience for me building a classroom in the public school and um, just um, helping these eighth grade students develop over the year. It was very painful work. I would not suggest to anyone um, to go into teaching unless it's absolutely your life calling. Um, after um, after this time that I did uh, teaching in the public school, I decided it's absolutely not for me. Um, I do believe teachers are underpaid. They spend most all of their time grading. Um, weekends are spent prep prepping your class. Um, you start to lose out on your family time. Um, man, teachers that are good teachers, that is, they work really, really hard and so my uh, my respect for teachers in the public school system, that is good teachers because there are some bad ones, but my respect for good teachers just skyrocketed because those men and women work very hard um, to educate our youth. However, in the school system, if you are a teacher, um, there is a lot of limiting factors to you as a Christian. You basically um, sign away your um, your freedom of speech and when you step foot on the school campus you as a Christian are kind of walking on thin ice if you pray if you try to reach out to a student and talk to them about God and more than once um, I got myself in trouble for preaching Jesus and talking to students about God and about faith and about repentance and things like that and so ultimately um, I decided never to go back um, to be a public school teacher or to pursue a multiple sub a subject credential or anything like that um, because I really enjoy my freedom of speech. It's a blessing to live in the United States and to have, um, you know, the first, the second, the third amendments um, or our rights as U.S. Um, citizens. To have the freedom of speech is a blessing because we can openly profess Jesus Christ. And 
if you're working a job that limits that, um, then um, you're not going to be used by God in the same way as if you can openly confess your faith in Jesus Christ to whoever you come across. So I would want to encourage anyone who wants or is looking for a job, um, maybe you're someone that is 16, 17, 18, 20 years old, and you're wondering if you should go into teaching or what career you should go into, I would say really consider um, <clears throat> your freedom of speech and your freedom as a Christian. And do you want to give that up to, to ultimately serve the beast system? Because the deeper you get into the beast system, they, the more they take away your life, your freedom, your ability just to speak out openly as a Christian. You probably wondered why as an 8th grader or 7th grader or 12th grader for that matter, why your teachers never openly spoke about um, Jesus Christ, Christianity, um, you know, their religion. <laughs> There's a good reason for that. They could lose their job if they openly start talking about those things. If they talk about uh, politics too much, about um, who they voted for or anything like that. Um, you could be under very serious persecution. So that's why I encourage young people, um, instead of going to uh, just getting themselves into school and into a lot of debt, I actually want to encourage people more now to go to a trade school. If I could go back and do it all over again, I would look into something uh, a really basic trade school for plumbing. I would apprentice with um, a plumber or electrician or um, someone that was in the logging industry, um, learning how to climb trees, learning how to actually do something, be, become a roofer, um, learn how to frame, uh, learn how um, you know to fix cars, to uh, be in an auto body shop, whatever the case, learn how to put on tires, you know, at very least. Um, so there's a lot of different businesses that you can make a lot of money justly, that is, without being a crook. And um, the Lord has blessed many uh, farmers, many ranchers, uh, many people in the trades business because they don't have to do crooked things. They don't have to. A lot of them do. But you don't have to in order to make money. So all of this to say is we have to seek first the kingdom of God. And if we put our faith first in Jesus Christ and ask him, um, just saying, Lord, please give me a job or give me a career that I don't have to bend my knee to Satan. He will do that for you. As I have progressed in my faith with the Lord, I have learned to trust him. When um, COVID-19 came upon the face of this world, my job working uh, maintenance for the hotels, that hospitality job that I had, it got all messed up, guys. Um, it got to the point that they were asking us to do things that were just cro crooked. Um, I was asked at one point um, uh, basically to commit insurance fraud. I think that the hotels were just really hurting and um, people were looking for ways to just make money and keep their staff. And so people started to do things that were crooked. And a lot of people, they'll do things kind of like they'll uh, wreck their car um, just because they know they'll get the insurance money. Or um, there was these winds that came through California. It was called the mono windstorm. And it actually did a lot of damage, but um, certain places were not really damaged at all. But then some people, they like went up on rooftops and messed up their own roof so that then they could get the insurance company to, uh, to give them money for their uh, building project or their roof. And all that is corruption, and I don't want to have any part of that. Well, they started uh, firing people left and right, and it got to the point where um, just in good conscience, during this time of COVID, I couldn't work for, uh, for the boss I was working for. So without really a day or two in advance, I just quit. I just went in and told them I'm not going to compromise. I'm going to quit. And that was my last day working for them. That was about two years ago. 
And since that time, I've went back to school. I went to trade school. I learned a certain trade. And I've uh, put my hands to task um, at the trade now that I am learning. And it's truly been a blessing because for the first time in my life, um, I'm not working for someone else. I'm not working for the church. I'm not working for the school system or Boys and Girls Club or the hotel. And a lot of you probably are listening and maybe you've worked for yourself all your life. But it's definitely a blessing if you can um, work for yourself. If the Lord gives you your own business and if you can make money um, the way God has allowed you to with your own hands. If you don't want to work for someone, you don't have to work for them. If you don't want any clients on your schedule, you can fire them all. And um, if you want to work from dawn to dusk, you can do that too. So if you do want to um, please God with your life and have a job or a career that, um, that pleases the Lord, you need to just ask him and say, Lord, I'm discontent with the job I have. They make me do all things that are compromising to you. I don't want to compromise my faith or my life or my family. And um, just pour all those things out to God. And if you surrender your life to him, and if you truly are seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness, he's going to make a way for you because Jesus himself, his name is the way. He is the way, the life, and the truth. So if you put your faith in him, he will lead you and guide you. I hope this encourages someone to seek first the Lord and um, know that he will provide all of your needs. May the grace of Jesus be with you.